our struggle against Wall Street and the 1% is moving into our neighborhoods as we occupy everywhere. Millions of Americans worked hard to buy homes. But Wall Street crashed the economy, deliberately profited from predatory loans they knew families could not repay, and put tens of millions out of work. Now they are putting families on the streets. Ms. Pittman was also a victim of predatory lending. At the age of 62, she refinanced her home and received over $300,000 for this home. A loan that was almost impossible to repay. A loan that she should have never received. A loan that was given, banking on the fact that she could not repay that loan. I stand here with the family who's now left to deal with that situation. The artificial inflated mortgages payments that the banks have extracted are robbing our communities of money we need for local jobs and small businesses and to get our economy working for the 99%. Georgia has the third highest foreclosure rate in the United States. Thanks to our bailouts, banks are now making bigger profits than ever. Before the crash and paying CEO salaries and bonuses, the highest ever in history, we bailed out Wall Street and now they have bailed on our communities. This family is an example of that. This family would also like to share their story. Through their grief, they're willing to stand here and let the world know what is happening to this family, but not only this family, to families all over the nation. We have, that will speak today, Carmen Pittman, who's the granddaughter of the late Eloise Mallory Pittman. Since April 4th, my world seems to have been one of the hardest mountains not only for me, but for my family, yet to climb. Sometimes February 2011, my grandmother was diagnosed with a rare disease called pancreatic cancer. The doctors quoted the size of the zucchini, and they was left with the heartbreaking decision of nothing else they could do for her. Unfortunate news, November the 1st, her house went into foreclosure, and that we needed to relocate immediately. My grandmother left, my grandmother mother left her that house. That's been standing since 1953. When my grandmother became sick, she got behind on payments, not being able, not being able to catch up with the payments. My grandmother, my grandmother nurtured seven grandchildren until we were old enough to get out on our own, finish school, and start working. But even our nine to five jobs can't help save our family house. She, she, was, she was one of many targeted from predatory loans. Please, please reach out and help our family. When Wall Street steals from the people, this is what we, this is what we get. We get families torn apart, families destroyed. Wall Street got a bailout, but the other 99% have to suffer through this kind of situation. And one thing I took note of as the family was speaking, they spoke of Miss Pittman in the present tense. And I truly believe that she is here with us in spirit. And she's asking, no, demanding that we stand up for her. And that's what we plan on doing. When Wall Street steals, it reverberates down the Main Street and ultimately to places like Glen Iris Drive. We have a message that we want to send to Chase Bank, who holds this mortgage. You stole from this woman. You foreclosed on this woman. But you can't foreclose on a spirit, and you can't That's foreclose right. That's right. on a movement. That's right. That's right. I want to yeah. thank Occupy Atlanta. Thank you. And I, I, maybe I shouldn't thank Occupy Atlanta as if there's something distant. We are Occupy Atlanta. That's right. All right. Yeah. This family is Occupy Atlanta. That's right. Atlanta.
And we're here to send a message. Chase, we wouldn't let you steal a 103-year-old woman's house. Come on, man. No. We wouldn't let you steal her house and put her out on the street last week. Say that. Say that. And we're not going to let it happen now. We're not. We hear that there's been a man coming by offering cash for keys. Yes. Mm. $1,500 hmm. for some keys for this family to get out. We gonna tell you, don't come back here no more. Don't come, yeah. right. don't come anywhere near here. That's right. Yeah. This is a non-violent move. That's right. Yeah. But you gonna strain our patience if you come back around here. Do not want it. We are committed to making sure this family has what it needs. That's right. Yeah. In legal help and technical help. That's right. But we know that it's boots on the ground. Yes, sir. It's people in this yard that will help this family. Mm -hmm. And I want to say one more thing as we close. We believe in accountability. Mm -hmm. You know, 4,000 Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Atlanta folks have been arrested in the last three months. Mm -hmm. But the very idea that no CEO has seen the inside of a jail cell is a scandal. Mm -hmm. You can put freedom fighters in jail, but you can't put people who stole from these communities in jail. Say that. Mm -hmm. We need to hold accountable not only Occupy Atlanta, but we need to hold accountable the CEO That's right. who got That's bailed right. out, That's right. That's stole right. from the community. That's right. That's right. Like thieves in the night. That's right. Mm -hmm. sure. right and now. now are free to get big bonuses. But we're here to tell this family that we're going to stand with you to the end come. We're not here for the minute or the moment, but for the long haul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let your heart not be troubled. That's right. Stay strong. And we are here, and finally, you know, we know. We cannot assuage the grief of this family because this grief is deep. But our faith commands us yes. that we be here with this family yes, sir. through this week, through the funeral, and beyond. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. and we, they, this situation demands that. And Amen. that's what we'll do. Thank you. God bless. Amen. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Thomas Pittman. And all these here, you see my grandkids. And all I can say is, I too was the victim of my house being taken from me. So, what I'm saying is, Christmas coming up, and Lord knows I don't want to see my grandkids out in no screen. And then if you all listen, sign to my voice, please, please, please help us. Help them and help all the people out in the street now. So all I can say is thank you all very much for coming in this rain and you being snowy, but you all always there. So thank you so much again. And that's all I have to say. But please help us. Please help us, Lord. Amen. Attorney General in Massachusetts is filing criminal charges against many of the banks up there, Bank of America, Chase, yes. uh, Wells Fargo, all the same banks that operate down here. Sure. Because if he believes they've committed criminal activity fraud up in Massachusetts. Yes, sir. All those same institutions operate in this state. Okay. What, if anything, is the Attorney General of Georgia okay. doing about this? Yeah, that, that, that is an excellent question. One, we know that Attorney General Olin, uh, in fact, uh, when there was a, there's a settlement, there's a nationwide settlement that uh, Georgia can be a part of. Unfortunately, Attorney General Owens has decided to try to weaken that suit. He has written letters to, I believe, the judge in that lawsuit to try to get the punishments and, and the monies that would be made available to the uh, attorneys generals is not enough. They stole billions of dollars. This is only a pittance compared to what they stole, but it's at least going in the right direction. Our attorney general did what? He, he has tried to weaken that case, and then we looked on his campaign disclosures, and we see money from Bank of America and other uh, banks. Mm -hmm.